Um, yeah, no, no, no problem. I'm trying to get this other meeting going. Uh, it's me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jim? Colin, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Carl. All right. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. We just got raced through uh, the end here of a planning commission meeting. Randy, is that you on an iPad or someone's on an iPad? That's me. Who is it? Randy. Okay. iPhone. Sorry about that, everyone. We got delayed at the planning commission meeting. Who do I see on here? Oh, no. We have everybody on a quorum. You see? Yeah, I think I just put Randy Skippers for someone other than Randy. We got Gail. She's muted. Right. We oh, have, uh, I'll ask Gail to start her video. Um, we have Colin, Carl, Rick. I know Bill is. Uh, we also have uh, Bill and Julie won't won't be here. Bill might be in in a little bit. All right, as long as we have a quorum, I'll start call to order tonight's regular session for the Village Council for July 13th. And let me get to my agenda. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll do it the, like the last time. I'm gonna go pretty quick, right? So everybody keep up. <laughs> All right, we're not, let's do right. it without the flag. Right, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. flag. of the United States of America, States. America. To, the to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. That's pitiful. <laughs> Way easier if you Last mean. time you speak said for you yourself, did. Gail. <laughs> I am. <laughs> All right, we'll just take a moment of silence, and uh, when you're ready, Mr. Manager, I think will you or Michelle be taking roll call tonight? I'll, I'll be taking uh, roll call, and we will have uh, Mr. Keller here. Mr. Holmes, yes, here. Mr. Easter? Here. Mr. Frisbee? Here. Mr. Bailey? Here. And uh, Trustee uh, Merrill is excused as is President Adams. Well, thank you. Uh, we have an agenda in front of us if everyone's had a chance to review it. We entertain a motion to approve it or I should ask first, Mr. Malley, are there any uh, Amendments to the as it was written. No, it's uh, um, I have no no additions. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. Trustee Keller, I move to approve the agenda submitted. Trustee Reister, second. All right, we have an agenda approved. We need a voice vote. Yep. So I, I, I know Ms. Reister supported, I believe, but my computer, it was Mr. Keller who made it. Thank you. All right. Mr. Keller. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Ms. Reister. Yes. Mr. Frisbee. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. 
and the agenda is approved. There are no uh, scheduled appearances or public appearance scheduled. We'll take this time. I see there's others on the uh, call. And I think Mr. Adams is just joining. Yes, and if I can, I'll vote yes on that motion too. Okay. Well, we'll take this time to uh, address citizens' comments, an agenda item or a non-agenda item we'll do it this time. And I see there's a few on there. Um, Jim, if you would explain to them how to raise sure. their hand if they have comments they want to make. Sure, at the bottom of the screen, there's a button named reaction. You can click on that and click on a hand raise that we'll be able to see. And we do have one phone call. So I'll unmute the phone call, the number. Um, I'm not sure who's calling in, but I'll ask them first. Do you have any comments to make on agenda items? Uh, the phone number is a 207 phone number. Do you have any comments? Okay. Um, and I believe uh, Ms. Coney knows how, if she had comments, she would. Yeah, correct. Thank you. I don't have any. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mr. Wagner, do you have any comments? Uh, and I think that was none, Mr. Frisbee. All right. Well, moving on to item number nine, approval for general consent agenda. Everyone's had a chance to review it. And entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion to, this is Trustee Holmes, make a motion to approve the general consent agenda. Bailey, support. I, I would like to make one statement, Mr. Mallory. Yes, go ahead. To, to ensure the good name of a village citizen, Norma Palmer, I reached out to her today to clarify why she was running the pavilion for her 25th anniversary and knowing that her and her late husband, Bob Palmer, were married for 55 years. And I just wanted to share with the council members for clarification that Norma, in fact, is not celebrating her 25th wedding anniversary. It is her granddaughter that uh, it's just a celebration for her granddaughter. <sighs> By the way, that's called levity, everybody. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> All right. All right. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the general consent. Jim, do we have any correspondence? We do not. We do don't have to take a vote on that. We do need a roll call. We, yeah, we do need a vote. We do need a motion and a second, and then I'll do a roll call. Will you have that? You okay. do have that. All right. My I'm my problem is I'm having some screen issues. My wife just fired up our backup computer. So can I have a hand who made the motion? I think it was Mr. Holmes, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And who seconded, please? Bailey. Bailey, thank you. The guy that's in Fiji right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. On that, the that's levity. <laughs> <laughs> On I the roll. It. On the roll call. Uh, Mr. Keller. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Miss Reister. Yes. Mr. Frisbee. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. And Mr. Adams. Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll jump to item 11, Mr. Mallory's uh, report. He's got a couple items that he wanted to address with us. Yeah, we have uh, just two informational items and then one request for a motion and uh, support on a grant submission. But first is on uh, July 1st of 2020, uh, Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmore signed legislation into law that allows municipalities to establish social districts where people could dine and drink from open containers outdoors. The goal of the legislation is to make it easier for restaurants to take advantage of public outdoor spaces and for customers to enjoy social distancing. 
Staff is reviewing this legislation. I've had an initial meeting with the five liquor license establishments on this topic. All five establishments are uh, very excited about this opportunity and looking forward to uh, staff's review. It's our intention to have a detailed presentation with staff recommendations to the Village Council at the August 17th Council meeting. Um, and be happy to uh, entertain any questions or, or thoughts that the council might have on that, but we wanted to uh, uh, inform you that we've undertaken, that was signed into law July 1st. Um, I have a question, Jim. I noticed sure. that, um, I think it was at the um, Tavern downtown that they had things outside. Is They yeah. can't take drinks out there yet? They, they can outside within the ropes. That's a different executive order that was implemented in June when uh, bars and restaurants were able to go to 50% occupancy. And I think it was June 4th that I authored a letter for each of our liquor la uh, license establishments that uh, gave them the ability to petition the Michigan Liquor Control Agency for that expanded seating outside. Thus, the goal is was to make up for the 50% capacity that they lost. So the distant whistle and hideaway have taken advantage of that already. We uh, have loaned them uh, picnic tables that we had stored due to um, uh, that are out there. And uh, as well, you'll see the um, patio area of Main Street Pub will soon be expanded. And Main Street has the option. I'm not sure if they filed the paperwork with the state yet, but we also uh, advised them if they wanted to go out on parking spaces on Prairie Street uh, during this unique time. That, so it's a separate executive order that only allows the liquor or alcohol to be within those roped in areas. So how is this different then? This, this, this legislation in this, uh, the legislation allowing outdoor seating uh, expires November 1st of this year. The license or the legislation for social districts expires um, either December 31st, 2024 or 20, December 31st, 2025. So it's okay. a lengthier period of time that would allow a very specific cup that's marked people could walk in between those establishments um, or, or where uh, the council, the local municipality would set the boundaries of that district. And those are the details we're hoping to be able to present August 17th. So it's really an extension of what is already set up in a way. Well, correct, correct. It's been used in a few other states. Ohio's done it since 2017, just another avenue of economics for them. And I think I I might have cut someone off, so I apologize. No, it's for his bad. I was just saying that that right now they can go out in the uh, roped off the gated areas and socialize with alcohol. What this allows is the expansion of it to go from the distant whistle to hideaway or to uh, okay. any other establishment within that district with your alcohol. Okay, thank you. That That's clear. Basically, it just makes can, it a much larger area that you can actually drink outdoors. They can do a pub crawl, basically, and not have to yeah. leave their drink right. at the establishment. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, I got to get back to it. So, <laughs> would anybody have any other questions they wanted to ask of Mr. Mallory about the social district? Okay, well, we can move into the sale of the property at 2U Avenue. Okay, back um, on April 20th, 2020, the Village Council unanimously voted for uh, myself and Mr. Adams as Village President to negotiate a sale of property that's not needed north of TU Avenue as it relates to the development of the non-motorized trail. We were able to complete that sale and have finalized it. Uh, we have provided uh, the village council with with the uh, details of the sales price um, interest rate over the course of a nine year land contract. Um, the first payment will be due uh, in no later than December 31st of this year. Once we receive that payment, um, I anticipate that staff will present uh, uh, to the council 
uh, a recommendation to assign that money to uh, non-motorized trail maintenance and or improvements. So we know the sale that it's not used for other, other items. And we can uh, set that up just like we assign money for DPW needs, police needs and, and such. Um, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. I just wanted the council to be aware that President Adams and I um, have completed that deal and it is, is signed. I like the idea that it's going to be assigned for the trail. The money is going to be assigned for maintenance and things like that. Because I walk that quite often and it definitely needs to have some work done on it. So that's yep. good. Uh, Mr. Mallory, it's it's uh, Trustee Holmes. Just out of curiosity, is the city of Portage still on plan for connection in the spring of next year? Or have you heard any updates? Um, I haven't heard anything to the contrary, um, but I it it hasn't been on my radar, Rick, for six eight months during this. Okay. So I'm anticipating it. It's still listed in caps the the financials. Okay. All right, hearing no more questions, we'll uh, talk about the CARES Act funding. Oh, yes, we there's uh, on, on July 1st also, uh, it's actually initiated through the federal government, but there's an earmark of substantial money to the state of Michigan for municipalities to submit for reimbursements of essential functions that were performed. Uh, I believe it goes back either to March 1st or March 13th. So under the policy of the village, uh, we're requesting council support that staff uh, submits a grant for reimbursements of all expenses that would be allowed under this. And prior to the submission of that grant, uh, we'll certainly detail to the council what those details are. We just wanted to start working on it uh, to be our goal to be able to submit it by the end of August. Does that, does that give us a better chance of getting the money if you yeah. do it right away? It's first come, first serve. That's what I thought. Thank you. Jim, do we have to develop what we want the money for? Identify? The, in, in the, I, I sat through one of the PowerPoints uh, live. Um, there's another one on the 27th uh, to more detail. As I see it, so. A knit, what stuck out for me for the village of Vicksburg purposes are our payroll expenses as it relates to our police and our DPW functions, be it the importance and criticality of the water and sewer uh, of them being essential employees as well. So uh, we're going to dive into the details. Um, we can go as far as, I mean, we had some limited expenses, but they're still in the thousands of dollars. The, the different, uh, most people haven't seen, we put a very professional barrier up and uh, down at Village Hall to protect the employees when we do open up to the public. Uh, we've purchased additional masks, additional gloves, additional sanitizer for the employees and the lobby stuff, and all of that is eligible as well. There's a component, I don't know the specific details of it, there uh, is $100 million worth of essential worker. Um, I don't think they titled it bonus, um, but it would be $1,000 per essential worker. There's 300 million and kind of what I just talked about, an additional 100 million for, uh, to cover the essential workers during that time. So it specifically calls out the employees Yes, yeah. yeah good. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, if not, any discussions would entertain a motion to uh, Mr. Bailey? Just a quick question. Uh, Jim, do you know if that is for um, this municipality or is that across the board essential workers get that money? The, the, the grant I'm speaking of is specific to municipalities, cities, towns, right. villages, and, and that. So it's not just all essential workers? Not, not to my knowledge, but um, who our connections uh, through the Michigan Municipal League um, 
are those that's in we're their clients the municipalities so all the information i'm receiving is specific to municipalities appreciate it thank you all right hearing no other discussion points to entertain a motion to uh submit the grant to the state of michigan for the cares act trustee keller i uh so move that we allow the staff to begin working on the uh, grant uh, for the Michigan CARES Act funding. Dale Reister, second. All right, we have a motion and a second that requests carries. Hey, Jim, real quick, how do you think you're gonna have the grant information back to us next meeting? It, it would, it's my hope, uh, certainly before the September meeting, we're trying to, um, I'm trying to by the end of the week finalize the grant that the council's already approved uh, for the EDA. Um, and and uh, um, then we're, the social districting will take a priority to the finalization. I certainly, certainly can 100% uh, commit to an update on the details at the August 17th meeting, but it truly will um, be our goal to have have all of that completed. Thank you. We need, to take, we need to take a vote on this, don't we? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Hey, one uh, last question, if I could. Um, Jim, is is the uh, possible infrastructure related to the CARES Act um, is that part of this, or is this no. strictly what you what you outlined the village employees and, and no. uh, yeah, not. Uh, infrastructure to to what I'm speaking of tonight, uh, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe is included. It's if it, we dig into it more and find that, um, but I don't believe it is. The infrastructure I mentioned relates to CARES money out of the EDA federally. This grant will be submitted to the state that I'm talking about tonight. Okay, thank you. Jim, if there's a um, a web broadcast that anybody would like to sit in on, if you could share it with the team here, perhaps sure. we'd have some interest to sit in and listen on that. Yep, I'll, uh, the next one is uh, July 27th. I did forward to the council blind copy wise, a uh, copy of the PowerPoint and uh, summary on, on the grant that um, the MML distributed, but I will, email out um, when the live version, the follow-up is on the 27th. Thank you, sir. Did we do roll call? We should no. take a roll call on that. Okay, all right. all right. Mr. Keller. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Ms. Reister. Yes. Mr. Frisbee. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Adams. Yes. Okay. Um, I would uh, just update on the parking lot that we're constructing on uh, Kalamazoo Avenue. The lights, the solar lights were installed over the weekend. We're anticipating hopefully by the end of this week, the bike rack to be installed and we'll have uh, top dirt placed down and we'll be looking before the end of the month to have a ribbon cutting ceremony on that parking lot. We'll also be placing a pretty professional sign that identifies it as a uh, municipal free parking and downtown development authority uh, dollars used uh, to enhance our, our downtown. So um, be looking for that date to come by the end of the month. All right. Well, it says we got to village president's time. Mr. Adams, do you have anything you would like to uh, say? Yes, I'd like to first commend the staff on the uh, CARES Act funding that they're applying for. And that's, I like seeing those type of things. I'd like to make sure that the council's aware that we're still looking for an open position on the Park and Recs Committee. And I hopefully, uh, Trustee Holmes can comment if Jenny is still working with the schools 
And the uh, final thing is, uh, I'd like to remind all council members that uh, I think February or July 21st is the final day for in the applications for uh, the upcoming fall election. I think there's a number of open questions for some of the council members. I hope those get answered if they, they aren't and that everybody gets their applications in. That's my comments, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm going to pass. I did all the talking on the planning commission meeting and almost made us late. So. <laughs> I'll go to uh, Mr. Holmes. You have anything you'd like to comment on? Um, do, uh, I, I'll answer uh, President Adams' question that yes, Jenny is is still working uh, with the schools as it relates to um, with with uh, getting getting students involved in in the parks. Um, also, it's my understanding um, that we have received President Adams one or, or possibly two applicants. So it's great to see that uh, citizens are are, are uh, sending applications in. Good. How about Ms. Reister? I'd just like to express my sympathy to Julie Merrill and her family on the death of her dad. Yes. Uh, uh, he was a very active person in our community and it is will be a great loss to the community. Thank you for that, Gil. You're absolutely right. Mr. Bailey? I'm all set, Tim. I'm just trying to figure out, is Rick, are you in like... Uh, <laughs> He's incognito. Fitness protection. Yes, exactly. It. There we go. <laughs> you can't have those windows behind you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> How about Kyle, Carl, Mr. Keller? Uh, well, I'd like to... Uh, tag on what Gail said. Obviously, uh, Bob was one of the pillars in the community. You know, I yeah. feel we've lost two two titans with Sue Moore and now Bob Merrill. Um, Bob was a Lion member for. He's he's the oldest Lions member in the club, and uh, he's going to be sorely missed. Uh, it was I was deeply deeply saddened when I saw the email this morning. Thank you, Carl. I think I got everybody. Uh, uh, the question for uh, the staff, uh, is it appropriate we do something as a council relative to Bob Merrill? That's a question that can be handled offline. Jim, you're muted. That's up to the individual or collective council members as a group. Um, so the council could move to do something as a council. This is something we can discuss in the next uh, seven to 10 days, I would say then. Yeah, it, it would be something, uh, be, municipal funds cannot be used or expensed for that. So it would be individual, if that's what, uh, one of the options. I, the, the last, uh, when Sue Moore passed away, we all put something in, kicked it in and did it as a council, I think. Okay. So anybody interested in doing something like that uh, as a council can email me or give me a call. Okay, that All sounds right. good. All right. It, it, isn't there, we can, we can uh, try to think of the term that we've done in the past where we've acknowledged a resolution. Somebody. Yes. Yeah, certainly can do that. Yeah. I think that would be very, very appropriate actually. Okay, we can we can have that prepped and ready to go by the next council meeting. Great, yeah, and I think you. I think we shouldn't. Um, well, Julie will be there, but it would be nice to have the family there. Um, point of uh, just a question: Did we do a resolution for Sue? We didn't. We did a formal resolution honoring Sue um, back in fall of 2018 I believe it was right. and then we did another in conjunction with the um, farm to table event mm -hmm. with that group in 2019 but upon her passing um, just each of each council member spoke uh, quite eloquently on it but not a formal resolution. I just where I'm going with this I just think it would maybe we're looking to have that state of the village 
meeting, I think in the towards the end of the year, correct? Hopefully, at R and R. Yeah, it's all predicated on you know I was hoping in October, but the way things are going, I, it'd probably be next spring. But yes. Oh, okay. Where I was going with that, be, it would be nice to 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 have both resolutions or proclamations for that meeting for both of them, for both oh, Sue and good. for Bob. That's yeah. that's where I was going with it. So yeah. yeah. We are, as we sit right now and before, we are uh, planning on holding the next meeting at, at the pavilion at the Historic Village, so it is outdoors and we can have appropriate social distancing, dependent upon any executive orders changing between now and then. I guess it's possible that gets bumped to September, but it'll all be predicated on, on the direction of the, of the executive orders. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Any other discussion for the evening? Well, you were right on. This is a half hour quicker than our planning commission meeting. Thank you all. Thank you for being on. I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank Thanks you. Well, Tim, Tim, hold it, Tim. Tim, sure. are you there? Yes. You have listed on the agenda uh, citizen comments. Did, did all the citizens for non-agenda items, they'd get three minutes, did they get a chance? We, we can do that again, but at item three, I offered it up as agenda items or non-agenda items, but let's offer it up to uh, the community. If there, if anyone's on the line that has a uh, item they'd like to speak to, we got to it three minutes. If you could just make yourself known, touch your screen and uh, raise your hand. Jackie, Jackie. Hi, uh, Jackie, 234 West Highway. I just wanted to thank and commend the council and staff for being so um, helpful and flexible and supportive of businesses for um, having outdoor spaces for people to sit, having the parking spaces for the hardware store and Rise and Dine. Anyway, I just think it's great and it's really been a lot of fun to be downtown, even though it's uh, we've had the issues with COVID, so I think it's a really great step, and I really appreciate it as a, just a regular old citizen and having a good time downtown. So thank you. Thank you, Jackie, for that. Is there any other citizen that would like to comment? The two zero seven phone number. Uh, no, I got an indication they did not. Okay. Well then, we call this meeting adjourned. Everybody's shaking their head, yes. All right, thank you all. Have a good night. You too, Tim, thanks. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Carl. Bye. Get another joke. <laughs> hey, yay, yay. What'd I do here? You gonna end that or not? Yeah, I'm going to end it all. I usually <laughs> make sure. Because <laughs> it